Hello there, my name is Dimitrios Kostantakos and I'm the CEO and founder of Deep Excavation LLC and adjunct professor at NYU University in Civil Engineering Department. Today I'm going to talk to you about how the World Trade Center excavation system works, how it was designed and the basic concepts behind it. Uh, when I was a young engineer, I was starting out in New York in 2000 after I graduated from MIT. I specialized in this type of construction. And as a young engineer, it was quite amazing for me like, to be called to participate and contribute to the World Trade Center recovery efforts after 9-11. Um, so I'll spend this time right now and in honor of the engineers and the rescue crews that participated in the World Trade Center recovery efforts and its design, I'll try to explain to you as much as possible how the system works. So, in the 1600s when Manhattan was colonized, more and more people were coming in the city and as the city was expanding, especially in the lower, uh, lower Manhattan, people were like expanding the city into its shores on the east and west Hudson rivers. Fast forward a couple of centuries and we're in the middle 1960s, the World Trade Center was decided to be built in Lower Manhattan and engineers essentially need to dig deep and create a deep basement within uh, that area. And if we looked and we had the ground here. We had bedrock at approximately 70 feet, which is roughly 22 meters. If I've done my conversions in my mind correctly. And you had buildings, vehicles. My son probably could draw a better car than my, myself here. And we had to create a wall system inside and into the bedrock, which is quite hard. So in the soil there was basically fill from all the man-made activities that backfill within the area. We had water relatively high, there was some soft material and then some stiffer soils, glacial, sands, tills, and things like that. So for the engineers to create the basement, they had brought what was an innovative method for them for the United States, which was called a slurry wall. So let's write that here, and we'll call this slurry wall. And in essence, by bringing in a heavy specialized excavator you can excavate panels within the soil and then you use a rock chisel or other means to dig into the rock and you fill that panel before you put the concrete in with a specialized mud which is called bentonite and it holds that panel together, then you lower the reinforcement cage that is made of steel and we put the concrete and that creates our wall in the ground. Now if we are to excavate here and not put anything else and just leave the wall in place that wall was going to collapse because here we have loads that are coming in from the soil and these loads are pushing the wall we have loads that are coming in from the water and we have loads that are coming in from the construction, searchers, buildings and other things and I'll draw them like this and all these loads are lateral 
And we have to make sure that when we're excavating that the wall doesn't move too much into the excavation, otherwise there's going to be a lot of damage because of the, uh, the soils settling down, buildings moving horizontally, so we're trying to minimize how much a wall system like that moves. So in order to support such a deep excavation and go all the way down here to our beloved bedrock, we've staged the excavation. So we excavate a little bit more shallow and then we put in a form of support, in this case it's a tie back or a ground anchor. So we drill like this into the rock and essentially we anchor the wall back into the soil. And we repeat that process and they repeat that process. Excavate first, drill the anchor. until we reach the final excavation level. So once we have all the ground anchors in place, then we can build up the permanent structure. And that's how it was done. In fact, they started from the core, building up. And then they, by putting floors and beams here, we put uh, a permanent support for this wall was provided and that was essentially repeated and the basement was constructed at which time and before at every step the ground anchors were detention so basically the connection that they had to the slurry wall was removed when uh, the towers fell down and collapsed, they fell into many of those floor slabs and they took a lot of the floor slabs with them. At the same time they backfilled the space with material and voids, which was not a steady solution. So what happened is that everyone wanted the rescue crews to go down as quickly as possible to recover as many people as possible and unfortunately that was not engineeringly feasible. And the reason is that if you didn't have enough support here, the wall will collapse. So they started excavating and then suddenly they noticed that some streets there was cracking, which was like as much as 6 inches, 15 centimeters long, and obviously that was related to the wall here moving out. So fast forward. A little bit and we need to go down and have a clear hole in the World Trade Center so what engineers did uh, and I had a small role contributing to that when I was working for another engineering firm is that we had to re-establish back the ground anchors and determine how much could we go down, could the rescue crews go down and remove the debris without the wall collapsing. Now imagine that this wall alright was really big enough. Uh, when I went down on the site and I like a year afterwards and I, I saw that it was cracked, it was distressed. So in essence the crews installed new ground anchors pretty much at the close to the locations of the original, stabilized the wall, and this way traffic will be re-established. And now if you go to the museum, you'll see that there is the exposed wall part, and many of you have seen this. And now, in contrast to the original construction, the new ground anchors are permanent because they are part of the museum uh, and of course in other locations there's floor slabs and everything else that are providing uh, support. For me personally, the World Trade Center slider wall represents the strength that the American people have. 
in working together, achieving things, and standing up to terror. Uh, and I will always remember this. And the Slarigo for me is the best representation of that spirit. With that, I thank you and I hope you learned something.